Welcome to the second section of the course, which is Identity Access Management. In this section, we will learn what IAM is. We will learn what the components of IAM are, such as users, groups, roles, and policies. We will do some hands-on tutorials on IAM. We will learn about Active Directory Federation and Web Identity Federation, as well as we will be reiterating the key takeaways and have a small quiz. We will start by introducing video 2.1, which is Introduction to IAM. In this particular video, we will learn what IAM, or Identity Access Management, is, what the components of IAM are, how to work with IAM hands-on, what Active Directory Federation and Web Identity Federation are, what is IAM and why should I use it? IAM is a web service that is fundamental in embedding security into your AWS account. It allows you to ensure authentication by giving you control over who can access your environment. It allows you to ensure authorization to resources by giving you control over what users can do once they have successfully logged into the account. It is a global service giving you an overview of who can do what in any region of the world. Some benefits of using IAM. With IAM, you have a shared access to your AWS account, a central control of your account, granular API level permissions. For example, if you want to only allow a user to only see a certain object in S3, you can do that. Or you can give them read only permissions to S3. And that applies to many other services. Then you can have Identity Federation, for example, with Facebook, Google, or Active Directory. That means that the users first authenticate using their credentials with our Facebook, Google, Active Directory, or some other service. And only after they have been authenticated, they can actually use your service. Temporary credentials to users' applications are also offered using IAM. Multi-factor authentication. IAM is also integrated with many AWS services, for example, EC2, DynamoDB, S3, and you can specify granular level permissions. IAM shows that it is PCI DSS compliant for card payments, and there is no charge to actually use IAM. You only get charged for the resources that you use. Which are the IAM components? We are going to discuss users, groups, roles, policies, and permissions. Users. Think of them as people. They have programmatic access, so they can use APIs to control the environment, and also console access credentials. For example, they can log into the console that we're going to show in a few moments. A best practice is to use IAM user credentials instead of root credentials. What that means is you should never use the credentials that you have signed up with, that is the email you have signed up with in the day-to-day -day interaction with AWS environment. Instead, you should create IAM users and then log in as these people. You can use pre-existing policy templates to assign permissions. By default, when you create a new user, they have absolutely no permissions to your environment. Groups. You can assign the same permissions to a set of users automatically. For example, once the user is part of the group, they will inherit the permissions associated with the group. An example is uh, creating new tables in DynamoDB. If users of a certain group have uh, the permission to create new tables in DynamoDB, all of the subsequent users that have, that are assigned to this group are going to have this permission unless they are explicitly denied to do so. Then we can talk about roles. Roles are the recommended way of specifying what resources are allowed to do with your other resources. For example, if you want an EC2 instance, that is a virtual machine, to be able to write to a DynamoDB NoSQL table, then you would create a role for EC2 and specify that it is allowed to access your table. 
A best practice is never to use credentials on your instance. And when I say credentials, user credentials or API keys. Users can assume a role to gain temporary access, example by using Facebook credentials. Then there are policies, which are documents that specify a set of one or more permissions. They are written in JSON, which is a key value type of document. And there are two types of policies, user and resource policies.